Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve four sum, lead code number 18. Now, firstly, if you have not solved both two sum and three sum, please check my videos on that. You will need to do that first. Okay, so assuming you've solved three sum, it's basically just four sum. So you have four different numbers that sum up to a particular target. So in three sum, you sum up particularly to zero. Here it is four different numbers that sum up to the target. And you also would not want duplicate entries. So for example, with the target of zero, well, then we could take negative two. 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Those all sum to 0. And you don't want all different permutations of this. You could switch these numbers around in any order. Basically, we only want one combination. So this is a combination of numbers that sum up to the target. These are a different combination of four numbers, and so are these. Okay, now usually I go and explain this visually, but honestly, if you've seen three sum, then there's really no point of doing that. I'd like to just really carefully explain the differences over here in the code. Okay, so very similarly, we're going to get n is equal to the length of the numbers. We'll get answer is going to be what we return. It's an empty list for now. And we'll definitely start with sorting the numbers. Okay, so we're still going to need to loop through the array with one index. So for i in the range of n, that goes over all the positions. Very similarly, we want to make sure that we don't start with the same number. You would not want to use the same number as you did previously. So as long as i is greater than zero and nums at i is equal to nums at i minus one. So if it's the same number than it was previously. Okay, we don't want to use that again. We can just continue. Now this is one for loop, but because we want quadruplets, we actually need another for loop here. So we'll do for j in the range of i plus 1 to n. So it's going to start at the position after i. Now a very similar condition, I'll explain this in a moment. If j is greater than i plus 1, and we have that nums at j is the same number as it was previously, then we would also want to continue in this loop. So this is just checking if nums at j was the same number as it was previously. And we also need this condition here if j is greater than i plus 1. Because basically, if you didn't have this, if it was just this, well, then j starts at i plus 1. And so via this, you might actually stop it from running on the first iteration. But you would want it to run once. So we make sure we have this condition. Okay, and then from here, it is very, very similar to threesome. We get low and high. Low will be set to j plus 1, and high will be set to n minus 1. And then while we have that low is less than high, we'll get our sum is just going to be the sum of all of the different values we're using here. And if the sum is equal to the target, then we found a solution. So we're going to answer dot append the list of those four numbers that we're using. And very similar to three sum, we want to make sure that low and high are not using the same values. So low is going to go up by one and high is going to go down by one. However, while low is less than high and low is the previous number as it was before, then we want to increment it to make sure we're not using the same thing. And while low is less than high, we want to make sure high is not the same number as it was previously. And so we'll keep decrementing that. Okay, and then it's just the same stuff as before here. Otherwise, if the sum was not the target, well, then if the sum was less than the target, we need a bigger sum. And so we would want to low plus equals one will help with that. And otherwise, we would set high minus equals one to try and get a smaller sum. And at the end of this, we would just go and return our answer. So if we run that, that is going to work. And we submit that, that will pass our test cases. Okay, so this, as you can see, we have a for loop nested in that we have another for loop nested in that we have a while loop all basically over the range of n. So this is going to have a time complexity of big O of n to the three and the space complexity of this again, kind of a weird discussion, the sort we're using probably is using O of n space, you might be able to do that perfectly in place, but I'm just going to write space as O of n, it might actually be constant as well. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.